The president appeals to voters, new right-wing alliance forms. P president Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa has begun the year with an appeal for the Portuguese to make their votes count in the year where electors go to the polls for national Azorian and European elections publica reports. He left a message for the government. It's like he leaves a little note on his on the desk. Uh, of, of the um, of the parliament building, or maybe for the speaker. Could you read this out when you've got a moment? Um, he left a message for the government, which was dissolved, not the message, but the government, after Prime Minister Antonio Costa, Costa's resignation over the Operation Influencer investigation. Operation Influencer, not Operation Influenza, and not linked to the last story. I don't think so anyway. Uh, Marcelo called for effective access to health, education and housing, saying democracy should be synonymous with less poverty, injustice, corruption, and disillusionment among the youth. Well, get on with it then, you lot. Um, the outgoing PM refused to comment on the declarations the following day. Publico reports instead he highlighted the urgent need to push ahead with a high speed. Yes, I haven't got time. I haven't got time to think about uh, health, education, and housing, um, and dealing with poverty, injustice, corruption, and disillusionment among the youth. Um, I need to push ahead with a high speed rail link between Lisbon and Porto immediately. Before the elections. Ah, maybe a tax cut. So chuck a tax cut in there as well, or the talk of something like that. Um, three right-wing parties have signed a coalition agreement in an attempt. It's not funny, really, is it? Three right-wing parties have signed a coalition agreement in an attempt to defeat the governing socialist party, the PS, at the upcoming elections. And again, from Publico re reporting, the Democratic Alliance, AD, combines the main opposition Social Democratic Party, the PSD, CDS, the People's Party. <laughs> I do like the sound of that one. Yay, People's Party. And the People's Monarchist Party. That can't be a big party here in Portugal. I wouldn't have thought, but there you go. The PPM it is valid throughout the current political cycle until 2028. The text of the agreement calls for political change. Well, there's an original thought. There's a, there's a pattern forming that I've seen here throughout my life when in relation to politics. Um, and why is it that they don't have to ask to come onto the news and be invited? The news just is about politics now. That's another thing, isn't it? You know, politics used to be a part of the news, and now it is the news, isn't it? It's just like that, that's just what news people talk about, it would seem, especially at this time of the year and this time in the world um, with uh, 40 or so major elections going on in 2024. It's quite the turbulent year not least uh, here in Portugal and with uh, European elections as well. So the text of that agreement calls for political change. Yawn uh, with a, what do we want? Change. When do we want it now? Oh, they didn't deliver the change they promised. Oh, what do we want? Change. Yay. With a majority government that's ambitious, reformist, moderate, stable and majority, the political group described itself as the only option to unseat PS which it criticised for the housing crisis. Hold on, I thought us foreigners were to blame for that. Um, degradation of the social welfare state and the ability, uh, inability to implement reforms, among other complaints. What's interesting to me about this, it's the same old, same old problems, isn't it? But using the same old, same old solutions to try and change them. There might be a problem with this, everybody. Uh, the agreement, I'm sounding like Russell Brand now, aren't I? Come on, you lovely awakened beings. Um, the agreement, oh, sounding more like David Bellamy. Uh, the agreement would guarantee a return to parliament for CDS PP, <laughs> which is what they're called, which formed part of the Passos Coelho government in the first half of the last decade, but failed to elect any MPs in 2022. Meanwhile, lonely on the left, the left bloc has proposed a deal with PS in what would be a partial return to the Jeringonza government in power before Antonio Costa won a majority in 2022, at which point most people glaze over and go and do something else like have a drink. Um, that's the way we do politics here in Portugal, isn't it? Uh, moving from politics, tired old politics, to uh, something that I was very excited to see in the news yesterday. And these are, it's on our homepage among our news picks of the last week. But I'll go straight to the source, as it were, uh, with not that kind of source, this kind of source, this, the news source here. The Algarve foreigners who want to create a political movement. And we'll be talking to the gentleman with the T-shirt uh, there, second from the left, on the Portugal Club this evening at uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, 8.30, actually, we have a check-in of, of the Portugal Club. And we've got some new members, which is lovely, at 8 this evening. And 8.30, we'll be talking to Paolo, who you're going to hear about in just a moment. Alba Ferro Group hopes to kickstart expat movement across the region. Who doesn't like an expat movement first thing in the morning? A group of foreigners in Alba Ferro is gearing up to create a political movement. 
I think they need a better turn of phrase than that. Maybe that was Natasha Don saying that, just, just sneaking a little giggle uh, into her news reporting to run in the 2025 municipal elections. The plan is for an association that truly represents the 54 nationalities living in the borough. Well, that's a truly multicultural place, is it not? Albufeira, then with 54 nationalities, addressing issues that relate to Albufeira's non-Portuguese. Look at this, which now make up 40% of the resident population. Now, this has been of interest to us because I've, I've taken the view that with, with a, a national level, with approaching one in 10 people being a foreigner, it will be good to to get to know more about each other and to work uh, directly, purposefully, mindfully um, with our uh, native Portuguese and neighbours and friends as well, and and talk about this and uh, discover, have a lot of fun actually, discovering each other's cultures and create better understanding. Because if uh, my my suspicion with this is, if you don't do that. Um, it, it happens anyway, and perhaps not in the most positive of ways sometimes, as uh, huge numbers of people integrate into any um, existing culture. So I think we should be mindful about that. And uh, we've got Paolo here, and I like the cut of his jib and the way he's going about that. And it's interesting to see that there are 54 nationalities in Albufeira. It's like a little Petri dish model, isn't it, of what's going on and what's possible here. 40% then of those 54 nationalities of that resident population in Albufeira their ambition is that this idea could spread to other municipalities in the region. Well, we'll have some of that up here as well, Paolo, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about it tonight, all of which have significant foreign populations. Signoti has trailed the story of the group that is now around 1,500 members on Facebook. That was uh, at uh, the 6th of January, uh, hearing that this is not just about foreigners and with financial wherewithal, it is, isn't it interesting? The first thing people sometimes uh, make synonymous with foreigners is financial wherewithal. It's also about nationalities that have come here to find a better life and live often on the margin of society, who you might not hear so much about, right? And again, another good reason to lift the lid, um, to have conversations and to find out what's really going on. Um, those who need help and support without knowing where to find it. This is what the association is about. Alyssa Scutt told Sick. Is she part of the, um, is that the name of the toll roads as well, the Scutts? Uh, it will be a way of helping foreigners of all kinds better integrate into their new lives. Well, we like the sound of that. Albufeira Mayor, meanwhile, Jose Rolo, has told Sick that the munici municipality already has a service to immigrants open every day. That must be frustrating for Jose Rolo. Uh, he has a service open every day designed to give the uh, information that's needed to the people we've just mentioned, including financial support. But the association considers that foreigners taking these issues into their own hands and taking them to the seats of local power could be exactly what the non-Portuguese population needs. So the, it's certainly the local authority, it sounds like, a, as a trickle down from national policy. The, w the will is there, is it? Is it not from the government and local government to help people and connect with people? But it may be that it's not happening in quite the right way to have the uh, right amount of take up with that. And so these folks have taken this into their own hands. We'll be talking to Paolo from that movement tonight. Um, I can't see what their name is apart from Group of Foreigners in Albufeira. And actually, as I recall, on Facebook, they, they, their name is something like that. <laughs> They're going to have to come up perhaps... Uh, with something a little more snappy than that. So says Sick then to conclude here, beyond the ambition of running for municipal elections uh, is the hope that Albufeira's movement travels to neighbouring boroughs, as was previously, previously mentioned in the article. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that and looking forward to that conversation this evening. Let's see what's going on uh, in the chat as well. Antonio is here. What do you make of that, Antonio? Bon dia a todos. And I noticed this uh, recently in Caldas Torreña. There seemed to be some sort of uh, foreigner center uh, where you could get help. But I couldn't, it wasn't obvious. I mean, that's just one of the ironies, isn't it, of being a foreigner and not being able to understand uh, when you walk past a foreigner help center because you, <laughs> you don't understand the culture or the language. So there you are thinking to yourself, maybe right outside the foreigner help center. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a foreigner help center? And there it is. Behind you, 